All right, welcome back guys. So we came out to the woods today and we brought quite a bit of camp gear here with us. And this is basically your, your uh, camp stoves and some cookware items here. So we kind of narrowed down our gear after years and years of camping and just gaining those experiences. And we've kind of narrowed down some of the equipment that works for us. So on our far side here, we have kind of our car camping gear here. So let's take a second and take a look at this Coleman grill here. So for our car camping or kind of like glamping kind of style, we decided to go with like the Coleman gear. So this one is the dual fuel system here. So you could burn a lot of different kind of fuels within this stove here, but this thing's pretty dang heavy. It's a big old suitcase and it really works out good for like a four wheeler, some kind of all terrain vehicle or tossing it in the back of your pickup. So this option here, we do use this, but it's probably our least used item, even though it is a very good piece of equipment. So the gear on the table here, this is the gear that we typically use more often or variations of it. So this one here, and the brand name on some of these is not as important. So this is a solo bush pot. Now this is a big bush pot here. This is if the whole family's going. And typically what I'll do is I'll hang this on a tripod kind of configuration and burn the fire underneath of it while it's suspended on a tripod. But another thing, if you don't have the tripod or you don't want to do it, you know, you could start a fire get a nice bed of coals and put this down on top of it, which will allow you to still fuel those hot coals and put fuel in there and get a nice boiling pot of water here. But now keep in mind on a system like this, this is probably your largest footprint. So you're gonna to have to build a big fire. It's not super contained. And then when you're done with it, you're gonna have those ashes and coals and stuff that's gonna leave that footprint on, on the earth there. So now, of course, you could cover that up with some other dirt. You could dig a hole and start your fire in that hole, but it still shows the most amount of impact. So we're gonna put this one to the side and keep on moving down. So another great option, and it's still in that solo stove, is this right here. This is a contained stove here. So basically you're gonna put your sticks in there, start your fire, and this one here, as it burns that wood material down, the gases are gonna come up to the side and siphon in and get a secondary burn. So this is real similar to like a, a modern day wood stove in your house. So this thing here though, it doesn't have a bottom either. So that bottom is contained on there. Of course, I got some ashes falling out of it, but that bottom is gonna be nice and contained. So you're gonna have a really safe fire, but you're also gonna have a fire that's not gonna leave a huge footprint though. So when you, when you burn this, you're gonna get that secondary burn. It's gonna be super efficient. It's gonna be a very clean system though. But now one downfall to these solo stoves, and I do enjoy these quite a bit, but now it's, it's not very packable. So it, it's a pretty big container. So really when we ship this, when we move around and we're hiking, we'll take a bush pot and we'll actually put this inside of a bush pot to try to conserve that space a little bit. So that's the biggest downside I see with the solo pot here or the solo stove is just the size of it and it's kind of bulky. But now material wise, it's a very good build. We've used this on dozens of fires now. We've cleaned it up. You know, it's got that kind of a uh, amber look to it, but it cleans up really well. It's a really nice system. And it has a little bit of functionality or multifunctionality to it. So here's a little alcohol stove that we recently made. But now you could put this alcohol stove inside of that and kind of get a little multi-function purpose there. So one, you could burn your sticks in there. You could also put something in there like your alcohol stove to burn with at the same time. So similar to the first system, now this is just a downgraded version of it. So we have our stand here. So you could actually start a fire, put this on top of your fire, and you still have the option to feed it because you got this big hole here. And of course it's vented on top. It's got holes on the side, so it's gonna suck air into it. And it's going to draw that air from the bottom, give you a good burn. But now along with this though, you could also have an alcohol stove to place over the top of it, which gives you a really nice compact version here. And so this one here, this is actually the Pathfinder version. So it's self-reliance outfitters. But now all these systems here that nest together real well, you could even take your top off. It's got a nice tight fit there, I actually like that. But you can put your alcohol burner inside along with whatever seasonings or hot cocoa, whatever you got. And that gives you a very compactable version here. So I think for one person, two is kind of pushing it, but this is a really good system for one person for sure. And this is kind of a go-to system. So to go along with this water bottle, we could put it in a Molly bag and put a nice stainless steel Nelgen water bottle in there, then nest it all together. 
Again, this is the Pathfinder shop here. But this right here is a very contained system that works very, very well and highly recommend this system here. Okay, so another system we have here is our Coleman Dual 533. Now this is actually one of my most favorite stoves, but it is very, very heavy. So like by no means is this a through hiker or ultralight back, backpacker at all. It is a very heavy stove. But with that very heavy stove comes some really strong ruggedness to it. You know, the steel on the construction on this is really durable. I feel that you could drop this or bang it around. It's still going to last you a long time. You also have some options like your generator tube. You could buy new generators for this in case you uh, it gets plugged up with any kind of creosol or fuel or anything on the inside of it. So now this is dual fuel also. So you could burn, you know, like a white gas in here, but you could also burn gasoline in it if you need to. But now as heavy as this is, I really recommend this one more for a short distance hiker, bush crafter or cart camper because of the weight of it. It is getting pretty heavy, but on the flip side though, I really, really enjoy this stove and I think it's a good option for you guys to consider. All right, and we're moving down the line here covering this gear very briefly. So we're just touching on the highlights a little bit here and some good options for you. But of course we got the the hiker that likes the light gear. And so these kind of stoves here, I think are a really good option. So you could get these in steel, you could get them in titanium, but they work really fast. They're probably one of the quickest systems. By the time you screw this thing on, you got your little propane tank here. This is a very, very fast and really pretty compact. You know, you could put this in your bush pot. It doesn't take up a lot of space. Of course, this top piece here, we could disconnect it. But now this does have some downfalls to it as well. While I do like the propane on here, you have the option of one, you, you run out of propane and that might be the only canister you have. You could damage this and it just doesn't have a lot of multi-fuel options for you. But it is a very compact option. It's very quick. You could put this in your backpack. You hardly even notice it's there. And as far as weight goes, it's probably just about as light as you can get. So as we move down the line here, we're finally getting to the firebox gear, firebox stove lineup. And so this one here particularly, I've been using this firebox stove, and this is the five inch Gen 2 stainless steel version, but I've been using this particular stove for well over a year now. So combination of testing it, using it on different burns, trying different materials to burn with it, I found that the firebox gear tends to be one of those pieces of gear that are really well thought through you know you could feel that it doesn't feel like a, like it was engineered on a computer and didn't have a person that was physically out there testing it so for as much as i like this stove i went ahead and i reached out to firebox told them how much i liked it and i wanted to continue using some of their gear and i wanted to share some of the gear on youtube so the guys down at firebox there they were kind enough to send me some different versions of their gear so that way i could test it out and i could share it with you guys but keep in mind, so even though this is a sponsored video here, I was using Firebox well before I ever got sponsored by it. So it is a stove that I really, really enjoy. And I think you guys should look at it as being a strong option for you. So the Firebox, they offer a lot of different gear in a lot of different configurations, including they have a new uh, freestyle modular system that's in the works right now. So they got a few prototypes that are out there floating around, but of course, that release date's coming up here in the future. So keep in mind, there is the Kickstart program. If you wanted to go onto their Kickstart website, and I'll leave a link for that down below, but you guys could help sponsor or help support that, uh, that project there and getting that modular freestyle stove rolling. But to go along with this now, one of the reasons I like the Firebox so much is just because of that multi-functionality as far as being a multi-fuel system. So I have like the Nano here, and the Nano is a very small, compact little stove here. And this particular one, this is actually the uh, titanium version. And so I got the titanium version because this is the idea of ultralight backpacking here. So this stove, when you break it all down, really fits in a very, very small package. But it gives you a lot of different options on what kind of feel you want to use for it. So I got like a Trangia alcohol stove here. Again, we'll pop this thing open 
it opens up and deploys in no time, super fast. We'll twist our feet out there. But you could use the Trangia alcohol stove in there. And that's all the way at the bottom, so that's probably one of the hotter settings. You also got the legs that can come with it, titanium style, that will pick this alcohol stove up a little higher and that burn won't be so much as, as hot. And this bottle here, this is just a bottle, this one's particularly empty right now, but this is just to carry extra feel for your Trangia there. Now, another thing you could do is I have the Trangia propane burner here, but now I have the shield on the outside now, so this doesn't fit with the shield in this one, but it will in the other versions. But now you could use that Trangia inside of that nano stove there, and that gives you a very compact, very fast option when you pair it with this kind of fuel system. But this is gonna be really fast deployment, and give you a really quick boil. When we're looking at this, you have a lot of different options here. So right off the bat, you have an alcohol stove that you could put in there. You got a propane burner that you can use in there. And of course, you could always use natural fuel around you as far as sticks and things of that nature to burn in here. So if you run out of one fuel, at least you got another way to, to heat up some water or cook your food. As we move down the line up here a little bit, like I said before, I've been using the stainless steel version. I finally got the opportunity to upgrade to the titanium. And the titanium is just really, really cool. But now there are some pros and cons from the stainless version to the titanium. So the most durable, most rugged is probably going to be that stainless steel version. As you use it, it does get that nice patina on the outside, which I find that pretty cool. But now the weight, it's going to be very heavy, even though it's the strongest version of it. And this guy here, this is substantially lighter. So I could do a more detailed re review if you guys are interested. But, but with that titanium though, you could definitely feel that the material thickness wise, I'd say it's a little bit thinner, maybe, maybe comparable there. But I think that you could bend and move this a little bit. So as you guys are burning in your titanium, you gotta kind of keep in mind this stove here is really to cook off of. So you're not trying to put the biggest fire you can to produce a lot of heat as far as keeping warm on a cold day. So really you wanna burn a fire that's, that's really orientated just to cooking. But now this titanium, without putting it on a scale, I'd say it's probably getting close to at least 75% less weight, 50 for sure. It's substantially lighter of a stove. So we went over a lot of gear in this little video here. And the reason behind that is I just wanted to touch base on some options that are out there for you. Now, all that gear that I showed you guys, I've been using it for years now, and I think they're all good options and they, they have their place in different situations. But now I think with the firebox, I keep coming back to the firebox equipment just really because I could use it in so many different scenarios and there's so many different variations of that gear. So I think the firebox is a really strong option for you guys to take a look at. So I think one of the big things with firebox is now these guys are out in the field every day. They're testing this equipment, they're designing it, engineering it, making it, and then retesting that equipment again. And on top of all that, that you guys could see in their social media, but they listen to you guys also. So if you have a piece of gear and you're using it and you're having an issue with it, I think they're open-minded to the ideas of things that they could change or things they could do to make it better. So Firebox, they offer a lot of different gear, but I feel all that gear has been tested pretty thoroughly. And I really feel that when I use this gear myself out in the field, you could tell it was designed by people that spend a lot of time outdoors. So I appreciate you guys watching. We're gonna leave a bunch of links down below on where you could buy some of this stuff. And of course you could support that Kickstart program. And we'll catch you guys next time.